inside my heart. First off, I should say I know this is going to be a very long, and I hope that you will bear with me and read to the end. Second, I know that I am at fault for the problems my marriage is having. That is not the question. I was wrong, I caused the issues. I know that I probably deserve every harsh word, disparaging comment, and negative thought that people give, both here and in real life. I simply beg again, please read to the end. My husband and I have been married for 7 years, together for 13. We have two children together, and I from my previous marriage. We are in our late 30s. Just for history and understanding, I should say that my previous marriage was very abusive both verbally and physically. In the past I have had issues telling the truth. I do not condone this behavior in any way and do not try to make excuses for it. The only thing I can say is that when faced with confrontation I try to say what I think will stop the fight. In August of 2021 text messages were discovered on my phone by my husband. A large portion of these messages had been deleted, only a few remained. They were from a younger man whom I had met and started talking with. He worked at a local store that I frequented. We began talking just because we passed it other often in the store. The text messages lasted only a few days, with the majority being the first. They were relatively innocent, with only some mild flirtatious tones. I deleted them because I knew I should not be having the conversation at all. I knew I was in the wrong. When I was approached about this I lied. I made up a story about why I was talking with the person and why the messages were deleted. It didn't take long for that to crumble and the lie was discovered. The truth was that I had been talking online to several men. Some old friends from high school, an old boyfriend, whom I had been asked not to contact anymore, and a few random people I met through social media. There was flirting and conversations that I would not have been comfortable seeing my husband have with another woman. In the case of the ex-boyfriend, we met a total of three times for coffee, lunch. There was no bonding and no physical contact other than a hug at any of these meetings. However, my husband had forbidden me to speak to this person again, so I hid this contact as well. When things started to come out, I did not want my husband learning that I had been talking to these people. I was embarrassed of my actions, ashamed, and knew that it was wrong and didn't want him to find out the extent of what probably should be called emotional affairs. So again, I lied. I initially said that I had some innocent contact with only a handful of people. I made up names and situations that never happened, in the hopes that he would believe this and not dig further to find out the extent of the calls and messages. One person was local and he wanted to go talk to him. I had to reveal at that point that I had made that encounter up and that it never happened. My phone records were accessed and it showed many many messages and calls to several numbers. He continued to press me for what else happened. I said nothing, but he did not believe me. We had many long, sleepless nights of fighting and going back and forth. The more he pressed me, the more lies I told. I made up stories about physical affairs that never happened. I said I sent pictures to people that never existed, all the while knowing it was not true. As this continued family and friends started to get involved. They were all told the same stories of the things I claimed I did. Somewhere in my mind, if I said something bad enough, I believed that he would eventually believe me. Everyone, including my husband kept saying just tell everything and we will get through it. Just tell the whole truth and we will work it out. But I just kept lying because when I would say something he would be hurt, but he would say that it was getting better because I was telling him things he could believe. At some point everything started to get worse. My husband's attitude toward me changed. Daily I was being called names and was told how much of a terrible bee I was. I accepted this because I had lied and I knew that I deserved whatever it took for him to get his anger out. And I had lied so much, asked other people to lie for me to match my stories, that I did not see a way to come back from it. How would be believe me now if I said I had made it all up? I worked very hard to tell everyone the same things. And even though the stories didn't exactly line up at times, and kept changing when I was questioned, I just kept digging this Grand Canyon-sized hole. At one point he asked me to say it was all a lie and that he would believe me and I saw my way out. I told him yes that it all was a lie, that I had made it up because he kept pushing and pushing and never believed me when I said there was nothing else to tell, and for a while it seemed that he did believe me. Then one day he started asking questions again about why I said this or that, or why I would have ever thought that telling him I had slept with someone was better than saying that I was talking to other men. I tried to explain that I just wanted him to stop screaming at me and that when I said something be believed the yelling stopped. I never meant for it to get so far or so deep. So now we sit, quickly coming up on a year, and nothing has changed. Now I am a lying bee, and he says that I have ruined his life. I have maintained that I was lying and that it was all made up and of course he does not believe it, and I can't really blame him. He says he wants proof that I lied and that's the only way he will ever believe me again. Until then I will continue to be just the lying W that he has to live with to raise the kids, that he does not even believe are his anymore. I don't know how to prove to him that I was lying. He has spoken to three of the men. Two of them told him the truth and said he talked, and only talked but he thinks I told them what to say. The third person, the ex that is the hardest for him to deal with, I did ask to lie for me and he did. So, my husband believes his story is the truth. The only physical evidence were the phone records showing the conversations. 
I attempted to get transcript printouts of these but the service provider says that is impossible. I have changed my phone number at the suggest of a mutual friend so now even the records we did have are gone. I have deleted every social media account and email address at the suggestion of this same friend, which my husband agreed to, in an effort him that I am truly sorry and am giving up talking to these people. I have stopped all contact with everyone other than people that he approves of close friends and family. Every day I am trying to show him that I am sorry for my actions and that I love him, and he says that he does not believe me. He says that if I ever loved him, I would never have made up the lies and that he does not think they are lies and for the rest of his life he will think they are the truth. He seems to tell me one thing but tell mutual friends something else. He tells them he wants to trust me and he loves me and that I need to talk with people and that going and doing things with a mutual girlfriend will help to start building trust. But he tells me that if I go out make sure I wash the funk away before I come home and that he knows I am just going to sleep with whoever I can find because he doesn't make me happy so he does not care what I do or who I do it with. I don't understand why he says two totally different things. It gives me hope that maybe he is just angry with me and that in time it will pass after he believes I have paid enough for what I did. That's why I'm still here. As for why I was speaking to these other people in the first place, I could make excuses but I won't. I was lonely and wanted attention. I did not feel that my husband wanted to talk to me. In my eyes I thought I was an inconvenience or a bother to him and that I only ever made mistakes that upset him. He says that this is insane and that I should have known how much he loved me and that I was blowing everything out of proportion. And I guess he is right. I probably did take comments and things that happened a bit too much to heart. I didn't mean to. At any rate, the things that happened are my fault, and my fault alone because I chose to speak to these men. And every day my husband and I argue about it and how until I can provide proof of my innocence that I will be nothing to him. I want to give him proof but he will not accept the words of others because he thinks they will lie for me and I cannot give him phone transcripts and all of my email accounts and social media have been deleted, I have no proof to give. I don't know what to do. I love my husband with all my heart. I love my family and I am willing to do anything to make things right again. So here I am, asking people who had been through this sort of thing, will his anger ever go away? Is there a way to get past this? Have I done too much damage? Should I simply accept that I ruined my marriage and walk away myself and leave him to hopefully be happy without me? I don't know what to do anymore. Again, I know this is my fault and I deserve all of the blame. Shortly after all this came out, he and his wife moved overseas, back to her home. He has all of the contact information, which I willingly gave him from the people I was talking to. I only know of a few people he has spoken to, of course I may not know everything. As far as divorce goes, it was talked about in the beginning. He even packed his things a couple of times and left but he came back. This gives me some hope that maybe it's not too far gone, but at this point I don't know. I understand that I have dropped a bomb on our lives and that time and work on my part are what it will take, assuming he still wants to be here. I had not though of a polygraph before. Is this something I need to get a lawyer or someone to have it done? I have looked into counseling, individual and couples. He went with one session at the MC with me. He said that he did not feel it would help because the MC could not make me be honest any more than he could. We never went back. I could see the same person individually, but I am not sure that it would help. I know the reason for my lying. I just have to figure out how to make it stop. I am a chicken crap when it comes to any time of confrontation. I have to learn to stand up and not be afraid of what will happen. Until recently this man never harmed me, so I should have no reason to be afraid of his reaction. I just have to keep telling myself that. All I can say is when I first opened my mouth a lie came out. And after that it just kept getting bigger. I tried to stop it and say there was nothing else to tell, but he kept on and he was so angry and I was scared. That's no good excuse, I know that, but it's all I can say. I will try to look into how to have a polygraph test done and ask him if that would be proof enough for him. My emotional state, I felt alone and like I was a bother to him and I wanted someone to talk to that listened to me. And instead of coming to him and telling him my feelings I was afraid I would upset him and that he would be mad at me, so I started talking to the others. I will admit that talking to people that seem to care made me feel better I agree that I probably gave these people good virtues. He often says that he is not what makes me happy, they do, and that they are what I want. I have tried to explain that's not it. That I do want him and he does make me happy but, again, with the trust issues. I think that even when I was talking to the others, I always wanted things to be right at home. I wanted so much to make things right with him, but I didn't know how and we kept drifting apart and these people were here and offering friendship. I read one of the sticky posts here about boundaries, on the main page, and it made a lot of sense to me. I know that I love my husband. I always have and always will I think, even if this doesn't work out the way I want. This all came out in August of 2021, so not a year yet but getting close. When my husband and I met in 2008 I was still very good friends with the ex who had moved overseas. He would call and we would talk occasionally. This upset my husband and he told me to choose one or the other. I picked him and didn't talk to the ex for many many years. In the first part of 2020 the ex moved back into the states and sent me an email. We started talking, slowly at first then more. 
We saw each other two times in 2020 A&E once in early 2021. We continued to talk but I refused to see him again because I felt like things were getting too deep and going somewhere. I didn't want to go. As for the other people, they were mostly old friends that I reconnected with on social media. Conversations with any specific person spanned for a few days to a few months, depending. But it all took place between 2020 and midway through 2021. So, about a year and a half in total. As far as getting others to lie to him, I did ask one person to lie for me. Of the rest I have made sure I have had zero contact with them. In fact, for the most part I had stopped talking to the majority of them before this came out. The bulk of the conversations were late 2020 early 2021 according to the phone records. I understand how and why he does not believe anything I say. You are not being overly harsh, you are being truthful and I deserve it. I asked for help and knew what that would involve. Judgment being first and foremost. I can contact someone about I see again and see what happens. I worry that he will not believe that I am with a counselor unless he is there, so that is an issue. In the past he knew I had an issue with lying. He never understood it, but he knew it was there. Maybe it is bigger than I think, I just worry that I walk into I see and suddenly everything I do today is because of a B and C that happened when I was a kid. That feel like is sort of dodging the problem and trying to blame someone else, and I don't want anyone to think I am doing that. I am trying to be more open about how I feel. It's very hard for me to express things. I get tongue-tied and frustrated and then he gets frustrated with me because I am shuddering and looking like an idiot. So, I started writing things down. It gives me time to think about what I want to say and how to word it without him interrupting me. It seemed to work for a while then I stopped writing because he said I was just saying to say things over and over. But I can try again. Maybe I should clarify, I did not say I had a physical affair in the very beginning. I admitted to talking to a few people and flirting. He pressed me for more information, I tried to say there was nothing else. He didn't believe me and got phone records. So, then I had to explain those, and I lied a little about them, trying to make it seem less than it was but eventually came out with all the names. He continued to ask, what else and I would say nothing and he would get upset and say I was lying. We would fight for hours, sometimes all night about it, him threatening to leave if I didn't tell him something else right then or threatening physical harm to himself if I didn't tell him everything. That's when I started making things up. And the stories never matched up so the lies kept getting more and more complex and he kept asking more questions and the lies kept coming. Yes, I lied in the very beginning on day one because I was trying to make it sound less than it was. Trying to get him not to see the extent of who I had talked to. Particularly the ex because I knew that would be a very big deal. I thought if I gave a little information, even if it wasn't true, that it would be bad for a while then it would blow over. I had already stopped talking to him and pretty much everyone else so it would just go away and I could finally start making things right. I am sure what people would say if he was posting, she is lying, get out now. What are you still there? She is an evil person who only did this to hurt you, why else would she put you though this? You deserve better, take your kids and everything you can and never look back. You should have called a lawyer in August. I know how it looks, I know why it's hard to believe. The general opinion is I have crossed the point of no return. And if my some grace of God miracle I can get him to agree to accept a lie detector as proof that is my single and only salvation. What am I doing right now? I spend my days trying to talk to him trying to show him that I love him. There is a lot of hurt and anger and a lot of very mean things get said and done. I accept it all, knowing that I deserve it, and hoping that me staying proves that I want to be there. I do my best to show as much affection as possible. Every time he mentions one of the other guys in any way, and it does happy daily, I explain how wrong I was and how sorry I am. I kind of wake up each day hoping that today will be the day I figure out how to make him believe me again, and hoping it's not the day he walks out. I spend time reading books, posts, anything I can find on how to repair a marriage. I try to make sure that everything out of my mouth is true. Even if I mess up an answer wrong to start with, I go back and change it immediately to try and show that I'm working on changing. A plan. I didn't have one until people here mentioned polygraph. I want to try that. I want to see if he will even accept it and they ask him to set it up so he doesn't think I am trying to pull something over. I should look in counseling, even if he refuses to go with me. I am not sure it will help but I keep hearing it a lot from a lot of different places, so it can't hurt, I guess. I actually accepted worse when I decided to write this out in a forum like this. No one has been nearly as bad as what I thought I would get. So, I should be thankful for that. I know that it's going to be hard for anyone to believe me given the story, and harder for anyone to want to help me. As for my reason for craving attention, that reason sounds as good as any other. Not to sound rude or anything. I just really can't tell you why I felt the need to talk to so many different people. I can tell you that you are right about my sense of worth. I didn't think I was a great person to begin with, and now I am convinced that there is probably not anyone lower in the world. As to my lying to you, there is not much I can say to that. I am trying to be very honest so that I can get real true help to repair the damage I have done. If you don't believe that I sat in a coffee shop for an hour and talked about the past with the ex twice, and at the mall for lunch once, you are in the majority. 
I will freely admit that each time we met it got more tense, flirting increased, and by the end of the third trip I knew if I saw him again it would lead to bonding. That's why I didn't see him again even though he asked. My family sucked. There was a lot of fighting, a lot of mental, physical, and ex-abuse, and a lot of just general dysfunction. My father got what he wanted, when he wanted it, and it didn't matter what that was. I learned how to not upset him so that everyone had a better day. But saying that is why I am the way I am today is a cop-out, isn't it? I know the difference between right and wrong. I know it's wrong to lie. Sometimes I mean to tell the truth and before I can stop myself, I'm saying something else. Then I don't want to get into trouble or make someone mad so I just go with it. One of the biggest things my husband used to get upset about was me letting people walk all over me. He couldn't understand why I never stood up for myself. I kept trying to tell him it just wasn't worth the fight. He still doesn't understand what I was trying to say. I know that the emotional affair is bad enough. Maybe in some ways worse. Because a P it could be just physical, no emotional attachment. And while I don't think I loved any of the people I talked to, I had an emotional attachment to them. Comments. You definitely must go to therapy. Compulsive lying could be a symptom of childhood abuse or a personality disorder which needs to be diagnosed. Then get a poly done for the benefit of your age so that he can know the truth. Then work from there, perhaps continue therapy, I see and then get into MC. The more your H knows the truth about what you did and about what causes you to lie then you can come up with a plan. OP responds, I will contact my primary care doctor and see if she can recommend someone I can see for I see. It seems that everyone thinks it's very important, and if things are not changing with me trying them maybe talking to someone will help. I mentioned the lie detector test last night and he did not really respond either way. Of course we had a good bit going on last night as well with the kids and stuff. I am hoping that he will give it some thought today and we will be able to discuss it more tonight. Even if he doesn't agree to it, maybe me at least bringing it up will help somehow. H. He has several friends that he talks to. I know that in the beginning he talked to a lot of them but I am not sure he talked to them about this much now. He has a couple of friends that he goes fishing with almost every day that I he could talk to if he wanted. A sort of the loop we have been in for a while now. He has known I have had an issue with lying, but it has always been small stuff. He is a huge person for honesty. He does not believe that he lies, and he doesn't really like people that do. So that puts me at an even great disadvantage. But the point is something would happen. I would lie, he would find out. Huge fight would happen. I would say I'm sorry and that I will stop and it won't happen again. I do good for a while, then the cycle starts all over again. I really don't want to be this way. I don't want to hurt people, especially my family, because of my actions. I just keep screwing up, no matter how hard I try. He knows a little. He knows that there was some ex-abuse and the family members it came from. He knows that about my ex to a certain extent. He knows that he was a heavy drinker and abusive but not everything that went on in that time frame. None of it is something I have ever really be comfortable talking about to anyone. Hell, my own mother does not know the whole truth about the abuse from my father. I asked him if he would be willing to accept a polygraph as the proof he is looking for. I also said that if he agreed I would like him to pick the location and the questions used. He really didn't answer. We did have a lot going on last night and not a lot of time to talk without interruptions. I am hoping that while he is home alone today, he will give it some thought and we can talk about it more tonight. He didn't say no right off the bat, so I guess that is a good thing. He did ask how much something like that would cost and I told him I didn't know, but whatever it was I would try to take care of it with my own spare, not used for living expenses, money. He shook his head to that because he knows I almost never have leftover money, but I will cross that bridge when I get to it. I am trying. He has access to my phone at all times. We share an iTunes account so he knows what apps I have. My phone has no password or anything like that. I have deleted all social media and all emails. I have two email accounts now, well technically three. One that is his and mine that is used for personal stuff. One that was given to me by my school that only has to do with my college courses and one for work, which has to do with only work. He has the password and access to everything except the work email. I could give him access to the work email but I don't know how the boss would feel about that. If I could quit my job and stay home I would in a heartbeat but that is not an option financially. As it is, we are kind of paycheck to paycheck. I was out of work for several months already because I quit my previous job that required. I travel every other month, sometimes more. He could not trust what I was doing while I was away. I tried Skyping with him so he could see and he everything I was doing, but the boss didn't like it. So, I decided to quit the job rather than have him think I was doing something behind his back. I will add the work email information to everything else that he has tonight. I have not really started work on the IC thing yet. I made one call to my doctor. I have a few names she gave me but have not contacted them yet. As far as the email passwords and such, he has had those for months. I willingly gave everything so that he could monitor my actions, but I don't think he really uses any of it, except the Find My Phone app which I know he uses often. He says some hurtful things, but I don't blame him for any of that. He is angry and hurt and probably wants me to hurt too. I think that's a very common reaction for some people. A quick update, I mentioned the poly testing again last night and I am not sure it went over as well as I had hoped. 
He asked what good it would do and ended up just saying whatever my full first name which he never calls me. I will let it sink in a few days before I say anything else. I don't want to seem pushy. Today seemed like a pretty good morning, so that was positive. There have been times when I have lied that he was not questioning me, but these were also instancing that I knew that I or the kids had done something, or not done something, and I was trying to prevent anyone from getting into trouble. It won't make much sense to many people but with me, you can ask me a question, but you can't question me. You can ask me how my day was or what I am making for dinner and I am fine. No lies. If you ask me anything at all that I can think you're going to be upset about, that's when I lie. Did you call the doctor's office for me? If I forgot to do it chances are, I am going to lie about it. Hell, even if I did call but didn't get an answer, I might lie about it until I get the information that's needed. At this point I am not sure that anything I do will matter. I have offered the poly again and he laughed in my face. He says that he does not love me and that he never will love me the way he used to. He says that I don't love him. If I did, I would never have lied to him and I would do anything he says to prove I love him. Some of the things seem too much, and I just can't do it. Then he gets mad again. This morning he said he would be packed and gone before I got home from work. I don't know, I just feel lost. He will not go to counseling. He considers it a waste of time and money. He says it's fine for other people but he thinks it's just a way for people to get money off you and make you believe things are wrong with you when you are perfectly fine. But I will go if that's an option. I am doing my best to show him, or at least I think I am. He says I am not. So, I need to find another, better way. My comment, he will need time to get over this. And probably counseling. You need counseling on why you lie. And you need to show him through words, but really mostly actions that. A. You are done lying. B. You are safe for him. C. This needs to be consistent over time. Will you stay with someone like this and keep her around as a companion? Do you think OP can rebuild trust?